Bill and Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina with another live stream fishing show. That's right, it's Sunday night and it's time for our live stream show here at Hubbard's Marina. Thanks for tuning in. And we're just about ready to get started here. Uh, another two or three minutes we're going to get started here on Facebook. Happy Sunday night, y'all. Thanks for tuning in. It's Captain Dylan Hubbard at Hubbard's Marina. It is Sunday night, May 3rd at 8.28 p.m. We are just about ready to get started for our live stream show. This is our live stream Q&A fishing show. Happens every Sunday night here on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook and Hubbard's Marina YouTube channel uh for about an hour we're going to talk about fishing we're going to answer your fishing questions and comments and hopefully share some good information with you guys and hopefully answer some questions this is a q and a live show so how that works guys you can text that phone number in the upper right hand corner of the video text that phone number your questions and we're going to get to your questions live during the show so make sure you text in some questions also don't forget to comment where you're watching from that helps us figure out where our fan base is and it enters you to win uh, we are going to be giving away some free fishing trips tonight during the show and the way you win a free fishing trip is simply uh, commenting one time on our Hubbard's Marina Facebook video. So you go to Hubbard's Marina on Facebook. Once you find our Hubbard's Marina Facebook page, you'll find that live video. And then just simply comment one time to, in order to be eligible to win those free fishing trips we're going to give away later during the show. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Don't forget if you're watching on Facebook, make sure you like the video. And make sure to share it with your friends on your timeline. Share it in your favorite fishing club. We'd appreciate it. Also, guys, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. And then also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. So watching on YouTube, thumbs up and subscribe. Watching on Facebook, like the video, share it to your timeline into your favorite fishing group i'd appreciate it we're gonna get started here shortly tonight there is no guests with me you guys are just stuck with me tonight figured we'd switch it up a little bit the last two weeks we've had guests on the show and uh it it's great having guests but occasionally it kind of impedes our ability to get to a lot of questions so tonight figured we'd shake it up a little bit and just have me so you're stuck with me tonight guys hopefully you're ready for a good show don't forget again to text any questions you have to that phone number in the upper right hand corner that's gonna be where we pull the questions from so if you got a question text it to us at that number in the upper right hand corner all right let's get this ball rolling uh we do have some good uh exciting news to share tonight and that exciting news is that we're opening back up hubbard's marina does resume operations tomorrow and we couldn't be more excited about it so tomorrow monday may 4th hubbard's marina will resume our regular scheduled trips and uh, our normal office hours will resume as well tomorrow monday may 4th we're going to have plenty of trip options for you guys. Now keep in mind, there are going to be some unique things that I want to make sure everybody is aware of. So if you go to our website, uh, just go to hubbardsmarina.com. Once you're on our website here, you can click the info tab and click that COVID-19 operating policies and procedures. We want anybody who's going to be visiting us in the month of May to be familiar with that link under the info tab, COVID-19 operating policies and procedures. Make sure you're aware of all these different procedures. We got some general ones, ones relating to the office, and then ones specifically relating to the boats, and then some specifically relating to our staff. Uh, so you guys know what is going to be required of our staff 
and what's going to be required of you uh, in our office and on our boats and just in general from everybody. So please make sure you're familiar with those policies and procedures. We ultimately need your cooperation. Our staff is going to be required to wear masks, uh, at least for the foreseeable future when we start. Uh, reopen to see how things go and then our guests we're going to highly encourage you guys to wear some type of face covering whether it's a fishing buff a bandana a mask whatever you got some type of fish, uh, face covering is highly recommended and then besides that guys the important thing is uh, that we want everybody to know um Fishing spots and bunks on our long range trips are not guaranteed through the month of May while we're under these operating policies and procedures. Perhaps into June, hopefully not, but perhaps into June as well. Uh, but definitely in the month of May, we need you guys to work with us a little bit. Social distancing is mandatory, so we're going to have to try our best uh, to move people around while keeping it as fair as possible, but also maintaining that six feet six foot distance between groups so if you and your buddy uh are roommates or you and your family live together you guys can all come out together you can sit right next to each other you can fish right next to each other no social distancing is required between your group now the next group you have to keep six feet in between you and that group so we're gonna have to spread people out a little bit we're gonna have to move people around shuffle people around so no fishing spots and no bunk spots are guaranteed so just keep in mind that information uh, make sure you review those policies and procedures and uh, when you arrive just keep all that in mind and be willing to uh, be flexible and work with us a little bit if you're not um, if you're not interested in that or if you are feeling sick or you're in one of those vulnerable classes it's a good idea just to stay home until this uh, phase two is upon us then we can relax a little bit then when phase three gets here we can really start to relax um, but yeah things are going to be different especially during this phase one reopening we have to be careful uh, and we don't the worst thing in my mind could be uh, someone getting sick and then second worst thing is opening back up and then having to close again because we can't follow the mandatory procedures which is social distancing and the only way we can do that is working with you guys and our crew to make sure those policies and procedures are followed as best we can so it is going to be a little tricky uh, we're going to have to work together to figure it all out but i have faith in you guys and i have faith in our great team that we can make it happen uh, so enough about that. The other big news that we have besides opening up tomorrow is this right here. Let me make sure I hold this up right. There it is. The Barracuda Hook Extractor. They are in. We've got them. We've got them in two sizes. We've got the 13 and a half inch. And then we've also got our eight and a half inch. Let me see if I can get this right. Eight and a half inch. So if you don't know what this thing is, this is the Barracuda Tackle Hook Extractor. And they even were nice enough to put our logo on the back. Look at that. He even wrote me a little love note. So nice. <laughs> we worked hard uh, with Burton Young from Barracuda Tackle to get these things made up. And this is what it looks like out of the box. This is the hook extractor. Essentially, you just pull this little handle together and it pulls that little... Uh, eyelet into the device and it turns your hook upside down so each one of our crew carries one of these on almost all of our trips especially on the long range trips all the crew use this religiously i don't leave the dock without one of these in my pocket uh it works extremely well to get hooks out of fish and it it stops you from having to handle fish it makes your life so much easier and the company that was making the original hook extractor that everybody used went out of business a while back almost two years ago and uh, they still had a patent on the device no one was making them quite right and uh, luckily uh, Burton Young and Barracuda Tackle were, were willing to work with excuse me had a lot of tacos for dinner and uh <laughs> it's coming back to bite me 
Um, but what I was saying is Burton Young and Barracuda Tanker were willing to work with us and we got these things uh, manufactured. Took a lot of time and a lot of engineering and a lot of work on the part of Barracuda Tackle. But this thing is going to change your life. If you haven't used one of these before, definitely recommend checking it out. It's made in the USA. It's got a lifetime guarantee. It's all stainless steel. It won't uh, rust on you. These handles are Loctited in there. Basically, there's a lot of improvements made over the previous device. So it's stronger. It's heavy, more heavy duty. And the issues that we had with the previous device were improved in this new device. But because it's made in the USA and because it's all stainless steel and it's a heavy duty piece of equipment that's guaranteed for life, it is a little pricier than we would have liked. Uh, it's going to run about $60 for the small one and $65 for the large one. So it is a little pricey. But in my opinion, I'd pay 200 bucks for it because I know how well they work. And uh, I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't leave the dock without them. That's how much I enjoy using them and how important I find one of these hook extractors. So you'll see them in the shop when we open up tomorrow. We're going to have them on the shelves ready to go. Uh, and we uh, only got a few right now, but if we need more, uh, luckily Burton Young and Barracuda Tackles just right down the street. We can get another big order whenever we need. So got some of them in the shop. We'll have them this week. So looking forward to having plenty of those available. The other uh, big news, guys, is uh, the Salinity t-shirts. A lot of you guys were interested in those Salinity shirts. That was uh, what Salinity Gear did for us during the COVID-19 uh, closure. They produced this new shirt. I'm going to pull it up here for you so you can see what I'm talking about if you aren't familiar. Um, this was the new shirt that uh, Salinity Gear made up. So it's a Mahi Mahi. Actually, it's a rub. And they made this on a performance shirt. It's a really cool performance shirt. It's got our logo on the front, our name down the side. It's a really, really cool color to it as well. And uh, Salinity not only made it in performance, but they also put it on t-shirts. And we got all that new Salinity gear into our shop two days ago. And the ladies have worked to get it priced and out on the shelves. So when we open up tomorrow, we're going to have all that new Salinity gear. We're going to have these new Barracuda uh, tackle hook extractors all available in our shop so lots of exciting things now that we're reopening plus another good piece of news is amberjack season has begun so amberjack season started may 1st it's open for the entire month of may and we're super excited to go out there and catch some amberjacks on our 39 hour trips our 44 hour trips and our 12 hour extreme trips Speaking of the Flying Hub 2, a lot of you guys know some of the issues that we came into with the Flying Hub 2. We, uh, we bought these brand new Yamaha 425 engines. We're so excited to put them into use. But because they were so different from the motors we were using, the Coast Guard made us jump through all these hoops with... Uh, stabilities uh, and stability letters and all this stuff. Long story short, the lady at MSO who's working on our stability letter has it, it approved. Now all it has to do is go to her direct supervisor. He signs off and we get our new COI. So we're really excited to get the Flying Hub 2 signed off and back into service. Uh, it should be pretty much any hour now, I would expect that new COI uh, to be in the mail tomorrow. So we're excited to get the Flying Hub 2 back up in operation. Uh, so Flying Hub 2 extreme trips, 39 hours, 44 hours, all great options to go out and catch those Amberjack. All right, so we got through the announcements. Let's get into some of your questions here. Let's see our first question. Uh, does your bait guy who catches the pinfish catch bigger bait for amberjack? Yes, that's always the goal when we open up seasons like gag grouper, amberjack. The goal is always to try to catch the biggest bait possible. Uh, unfortunately, though, going out there and catching bait is fishing. Uh, so a lot like fishing, sometimes the fish don't cooperate or sometimes when you're targeting big fish, 
They're not going to swim into the traps as easy. And bigger pinfish, there's less of them in a trap. So in order to get big, huge, large orders, sometimes we have to balance it with a few big baits and a few smaller baits. Um, but our bait guy, Brian, has been out of work for two months. And he's super excited to get back to work and catch some big select baits. So he also is going to be hooking and lining bigger baits uh, while his pinfish traps are soaking. We'll hopefully have some uh, bigger select baits uh, too as well. So not only will we have our $9 a dozen pinfish mix, uh, we'll be trying to maximize the size of those baits, uh, but Brian will also have some big select baits available for sale too. So yes, during Amberjack season, our bait guy does try to catch the biggest possible baits, um, but it is fishing, so bear with him. Um, let's see, what other question... Um, what kind of tips and bait would you suggest for kayak fishing, uh, around the shore structures locally? Uh, so inshore fishing, uh, it really depends on your, uh, your, uh, experience level as far as what bait I would recommend. Uh, but the easiest thing I always tell people, if you're not super experienced, a little bit of live shrimp or even frozen shrimp is a great place to start. Shrimp's a good all-around bait, especially right now around the structures. There's still some sheep's head biting. There's mangrove snapper starting to show up, and you never know uh, a, a flounder, uh, snook, or even a redfish could be showing up around that uh, piling or structure that you're fishing uh, from your kayak too. So shrimp's a great all-around bait. If you're a little bit more of an experienced angler, uh, artificial lures work really well to allow you to cover a larger area, show your baits to more fish, and be more successful. Um, but unfortunately with artificial lures, you're often only as uh proficient and you're only as successful as your ability to work that lure naturally and present that bait naturally. So it takes a lot more skill uh, to catch a lot of fish consistently with artificial lures, um, but it allows you to show your bait to more fish, cover more area, and generally be more successful. So if you got a kayak or you got a boat, you got the ability to move through an area, artificial baits are going to make you more successful if you know how to work them properly and you're presenting that bait naturally. Because an artificial lure is only as good as the person working that lure. Uh, but as far as the best bait, uh, a, sh a live shrimp is a great all-around bait. It gives you a chance for a lot of different species. Uh, but good question. Let's see here. What's the next question? Uh, going out on a five-hour half day in the morning, are the hogfish still biting? Uh, well, we haven't been fishing ourselves uh, since March 23rd when we closed. So for us, it's been a while, but uh, we know locally there's still some hogfish being caught. A lot of our local captains are still catching hogfish. Some of our captains and crew are still fishing during the closure, trying to have some fun themselves. So the hogfish are still biting for sure. I think, in my opinion, the bite slows down a little bit this time of year. Once that water starts warming up and those spit, uh, spear fishermen go diving more, those hogfish get a little bit more leader shy. For example, yesterday, Saturday, uh, and even today, this morning, I have never, ever seen so many boats out in the water. This morning, I was hanging out at John's Pass, getting the phone set up and getting some signage out this morning. Uh, and just from that little short amount of time, I was out there filming the sunrise video and on the dock talking to the crew. I saw boat after boat after boat leaving the pass. And most of those boats... Uh, I wouldn't say most, excuse me. Uh, some of those boats, I would say at least a dozen of them, had no fishing rods on them. They all had spear fishing uh, guns set up in the back and dive tanks, uh, and everybody was wet suited up. So the, the divers, the skin divers, the scuba divers, they're back in action. That water's starting to warm up, clear up, and uh, with all the scuba divers and spear fishermen out there in the water, those hogfish, in my opinion, get a little bit more skittish. The best time, uh, in my opinion, to catch hogfish are in the cooler months from October-ish to around early May, late April is a great time to get them. Once it starts getting into that late spring to early fall time, they get a little bit more leader shy and skittish. But 
we still catch them. We catch hogfish year round. We just don't uh, often see the concentrations and proliferation and ease of catch that we do in the cooler months in the warmer summer months. But uh, hopefully you'll prove me wrong. Hopefully we'll go out there and smash them. I know a lot of our fishing areas that we frequent and our ledges and rock piles that we catch a lot of hogfish on, uh, they haven't been fished in a long time. So hopefully we've got lots of hungry, happy hogfish waiting for us when we get back out there. Uh, but good question. Let's see here. Uh, I want to go on the 44 hour this week. How does the full moon affect fishing? Um, so, and so, uh, I, the other part of the question was about the weather. So, uh, as far as the full moon goes, the full moon definitely affects fishing. Uh, the full moon allows for those snapper to feed all night long. So generally around full moons, we have really good snapper fishing. And that's why we offer a 44 hour trip. A 44 hour trip is essentially the same, uh, as a 39 hour because we're fishing the same areas, same boat, same layout, essentially the same trip. The 44 hour though gives you five extra hours of that night fishing time uh, because the trip leaves five hours earlier. So the night fishing time is always the best time to catch those mangrove snapper and other snapper species. So uh, in order to capitalize on that night fishing time, that 44 hours on a full moon or as close to a full moon as we can get it, and it allows more night fishing time. So the fishing for snapper at night on this coming 44 hour should be stellar because it's right after that full moon and typically a day or two before the full moon and a day or two after the full moon is typically best for uh, fishing uh, and for daytime fishing almost two or three days ahead of the full moon is best and two or three days after is best uh, for nighttime fishing you can get a little closer right on the full moon sometimes it's a little bit slower um, but that is a general rule sometimes that is wrong it is fishing not catching but the general rule is right on uh the full moon is a little slower than a little bit before it or a little bit after uh so this week we've got a tuesday 39 hour trip right ahead of the full moon two or three days ahead of it and we've got a 44 hour right behind it so really able this week to capitalize on that full moon and hopefully that's going to mean some great fishing for our day trips this week tuesday should be a great day to get out there on a half day trip or a 10 hour all day and it'll be a great day to get on that 39 hour trip and capitalize on that pre full moon bite and then later this week Sunday's 10 hour all day or the Friday 44 hour extreme or the Sunday 12 hour extreme all great options so we're looking forward to a great week of fishing and as far as the weather is concerned you can always go to our website uh, hubbardsmarina.com and click fishing trips under the fishing trips you can go down to weather links our weather links page holds all the weather information that we use to check the weather and as far as our 30 uh, 39 hour trip forecast you just click that 39 hour trip and you can see here Tuesday's 39 hour trip has gorgeous conditions basically less than one foot the entire fishing time it's going to get a little sporty there Thursday but this is the offshore forecast remember our 10 hour trip Thursday should be pretty much fine um, and then Friday it calms back down again so the 44 hour looks really good this weekend too so great weather for the midweek 39 hour and the Friday 44 hour so definitely looking forward to not only great fishing but great weather as well uh, let's see here. I think it's about time to go ahead and give away one of our free trips. So we're going to give away our free five-hour half day for two guests first. Let's see who the lucky winner of a five-hour half day for two people is. Let's see here. Drum roll, please. 
Angie Collins, loved our trip last September. Can't wait to visit again in June. Well, we look forward to seeing you, Angie, on a five-hour half day for two. Remember, if you are picked as one of those lucky winners, you do have to text that number in the upper right-hand corner there. Uh, text that number, uh, your full home address to claim uh, your free trip. So make sure uh, you are doing that if you get picked as a lucky winner make sure you claim your free trip by texting uh, that number in the upper right hand corner all right let's see here oh uh, next question <laughs> uh hey ba -ba -ba. Uh, my wife and i won a free 39 hour trip uh back in april and was wondering the status on getting that uh, so if you won that April 12th, that was when we were closed. Uh, so any of our free certificates that were won during our live shows during our closure, obviously we hadn't been able to get those out yet because we've been entirely closed and our business office has been closed. Now that we're reopening, all those certificates should go out in the mail here this coming week or next. So uh, be patient with us. We've been entirely shut down, but we're still giving away free stuff. But we just ask for your patience. We'll get it to you as soon as we can now that we're reopening. Let's see. Next question. How do you hook a live bait to your double snell rig? This is a great question because the answer to it is you don't. Most of the time when you're using a double hook rig, it's for live bait fishing. So the only time I'm using a double snell rig is when I'm mangrove snapper fishing or red grouper fishing and I'm putting a dead bait on it. If I'm using a live bait, I'm going to switch to a single hook rig. The idea behind a live bait is you're giving a really natural presentation and you're making that fish uh, think that it's a natural bait and he wants to come up and eat that nice live bait that you spent time and energy catching or you spent money purchasing. So the idea with that live bait is you want it to look as natural as possible. So having an extra hook hanging from it isn't a good idea. So generally when grouper fishing or amberjack fishing or live bait fishing for snook or whatever it might be, I always use a single hook rig. Now there are occasions where I would put a live bait on a double snell rig. If I'm mangrove snapper fishing on a 39 or 44 hour trip or I'm on a long range private charter and I'm mangrove snapper fishing, I'm going to use a double snell rig and I'm going to use a chunk of thread fin, what we call a thread fin plug. Now, sometimes those big mangrove snapper, those really big seven, eight, nine pound mangroves, they like to eat those smaller pinfish. So I like to bring some of those smaller pinfish for mangrove snapper baits. And occasionally, if the bite's really hot, I'll send down one of those smaller pinfish uh, for a mangrove snapper. And I'll put that hook uh, up underneath its jaw or I'll tail hook it depending on what's going on on that bottom hook or that hook furthest away from the lead. Uh, so that's how you rig it on a double snow rig. You use that bottom hook. But generally if time allows or uh, if I'm fishing for anything but mangrove snapper, I always put a single hook rig down on a live bait. Uh, very rarely do I use a double hook rig for mangrove snapper fishing but it it would just be if the bite's really hot and i want a chance for one of those bigger mangroves and i'm too lazy to go upstairs and get my other rod that's rigged with a single hook <laughs> let's see here uh has anybody ever tried sand fleas as bait on a 39 hour fishing trip or is that a dumb question? <laughs> well, there's no dumb questions. There's only stupid answers. So that's my favorite saying because uh, it can't never it can never hurt to ask a question. So please feel free to ask questions. If it's really crazy, I might not answer it during the live show. I don't want to embarrass anybody. I might just answer it privately after the show. Uh, but definitely no no such thing as a stupid question. Please feel free to shoot me any questions you might have. Um, 
as far as sand fleas on a 39 hour trip, it probably would work. You'd probably catch some fish on them. Uh, crustaceans are great bait. Red grouper like crustaceans, hogfish like crustaceans, even snapper species and porgies especially love crustaceans. And a sand flea is essentially a crustacean. So it may, it might work. It probably would work. Now, would it be a bait that I would choose? Probably not. Uh, primarily on an overnight trip, a 39 hour trip, or really essentially any of our trips, I would prefer to use primarily the dead bait that's provided, those thread fins, cutting up one of those thread fins on a double snow rig uh, with a mangrove snapper, two speed reel, uh, one of our Daiwa Saltiga LD50s on one of our custom Hubbard's Marina Bull Bay rods is what I use 90% of the time. That way I can catch anything from a mangrove snapper or I might be able to catch a grouper or whatever else is down there. Now, if, I, if I'm targeting a big red grouper or a red snapper, I might throw a squid strip down. If I'm targeting porgies, I might use a smaller strip of squid or a trigger fish or vermilion small cubes of squid or a gray snapper on the half day of small cube of squid. If I want to go after a hogfish or if the mangrove snappers are being a little finicky, I might use live shrimp. Uh, and then if I'm going after one of those grouper or an amberjack, I'd use one of those pinfish. If I want a really big amberjack, I'd use maybe a select bait or uh, one of those porgies that I had caught out there during the 39 hour trip. That's primarily the bait that I would use. The only unique bait that I might bring is maybe some bonita, especially during red snapper season. A bonita is a good idea. We sell them in the shop. You can bring one of those frozen bonitas out and strip that up. It makes really good uh, red snapper bait. Uh, baby octopus is a really good bait for snapper and grouper. We sell that in the shop. Um, and you can, I've seen people bring out crabs before. Those work really well for red grouper. Um, but sand fleas is not something that I've, I've personally seen used. Um, but who knows? It will, it probably will work. Uh, next question is, since you guys are requiring face covers for staff and encouraging customers uh, to use face covers and masks and or masks, will you have them for sale? Uh, we are planning to have uh, face these cloth face masks and custom Hubbard's Marina fishing buffs, which are face shields. Uh, we should have both of those in the shop hopefully this week. We're not going to have them tomorrow uh, when we open because unfortunately the demand was super high. So it's taken our supplier a little longer to get them. Um, but as soon as we get them, we'll have them in the shop for sale. So we don't, won't have them tomorrow, but we should have them this week. And the custom Hubbard's Marina fishing buffs are really cool. I, I can't wait to pick up a couple myself. Uh, finally, going into Publix, I'll be uh, looking good. <laughs> uh, let's see here. What other questions do we have? What happens if someone books a trip and starts to feel sick right before the trip happens? Will they lose their money? Uh, again, if you come or if you, that's a good question. Uh, so the question was, if you book a trip, you start to feel sick. What happens to your money if you need to cancel? Because remember, if you're sick, we don't want you coming. You can't come. If you're not feeling good, we don't want you around the office or on the boat. So again, under the info tab, you can go to that COVID-19 operating policies and procedures page. It's got all the questions that you need to know and that question was covered here about our cancellation policies so our cancellation policies are not currently in effect if you need to uh, or if you have to you, we can transfer your payment to a gift card for a future trip uh, or we can transfer you to another trip in the future. If you do not feel comfortable being on our boats, we are not forcing anybody to join us at all. We're doing the best we can to practice social distancing and keep you safe. But if you're in the high risk category, or if you have underlying conditions, or if you're sick, we do not want you to come at this time. So please make sure you're aware of all those policies and if you're feeling sick don't come we can transfer your payment to a gift card or to another trip and we'll work with you if, the, if nothing else works we will we have been refunding people as well obviously we've been closed for 40 days so that's 
not something we want to do, but we will. We're working with people too. I mean, we don't want anybody to be in a tough spot and we're definitely not forcing anybody to join us. If you're at all uncomfortable about going out in public or if you have underlying conditions or if you're in that vulnerable class, don't leave your house. Don't come see us. Just because we're open doesn't mean you have to come. Do we want you to come? Yes, please. <laughs> but we don't want you to come if you don't feel comfortable. So keep that in mind, guys. Let's see here. I'm going on the Tuesday 10-hour all day. I know you just opened back up. Are you going to have live shrimp? Yes, we are getting 2,000 shrimp tomorrow morning at 4 a.m. And I couldn't be more excited. The live shrimp is coming back. The live pinfish are coming back. The dead bait's coming back. All our bait procedures will be normal. So yes, Tuesday for our 10-hour trip, we'll get a nice big shrimp order delivered. So yes, we'll have shrimp Tuesday for you. 100%. So same things as normal as far as the bait is concerned. <laughs> Let's see here. Can you troll on the way out and back from the 12-hour night snap? Jeez, tacos, man, are killing me. <laughs> they were really good, though. I'm good at making tacos, but burping is not cool. <laughs> so you can troll on any five-hour half day. Uh, and you can troll on any 39 or 44 hour trip on our 10 hour trips and our 12 hour trips, nine out of 10 times. No, you can't troll because those boats are moving a little too fast. We have a limited amount of fishing time. We want to get further from shore. So typically on our 10 and 12 hour trips, no trolling on our five hour trips. Yes, trolling on our 39 and 44 hour trips. Yes to trolling. As long as you have your own specialty tackle, you got the big reels, you got the right tackle. As long as you have the right tackle, uh, you can definitely troll. It's not a problem. Um, and you don't necessarily have to have a stern spot to troll too. Anybody on the boat can troll, uh, but with the social distancing rules in effect, it is going to be a little trickier during this social distancing requirement. So during phase one, don't count on trolling because we can't, like on a 39-hour trip, normally we can have six to eight people back there trolling. With social distancing in effect, we can essentially basically have three people trolling, and that's about it. So keep that in mind. We're going to have to be working together and be flexible, and if you're not interested in that, don't come right now because we have to be strict and enforce this social distancing because if we don't, we could get shut down or fined or worse. So you guys got to work with us, please. <laughs> Let's see here. Will out-of-state anglers be welcome aboard in our hotels in the open area open for patrons? Um, yes, we're not excluding anybody uh, at Hubbard's Marina, but travel is still restricted into our state uh, from hot spots. The border is still closed if you're from certain areas. So if, if, if you're asking me uh, as far as advice, if you're from our, out of state, I would wait a little while. Uh, I don't think traveling is the best idea right now. Um, now, it's a free country. If you guys get in your car and drive down here, we'd love to put you on the boat. But as long as you're feeling safe and you're not in that vulnerable class and you don't have underlying conditions, uh, that's my personal opinion. But do I recommend it? Probably not. And uh, uh, I know it's difficult in our area right now. There's a lot of things that are closed, a lot of hotels that are super limited capacity. So... I would wait a little while, especially into like probably phase two when things start relaxing a little bit more and things get ironed out a little bit more. I would imagine that's when travel restrictions will start lightening up a little bit. But uh, to answer your question, we are welcoming anybody to go fishing as long as they're not sick, as long as they're not in that vulnerable class or they're not... Uh, they're not uncomfortable joining us and you're willing and able and flexible enough to meet and adhere to our operating policies and procedures. Uh, let's see here. If I run out of sardines, will you be buying? If you run out of sardines, will you be buying Chinese at three times the price? I'm confused by that question because we don't use sardines. We use thread fins and we don't buy uh 
Chinese baits, we, we buy baits from Aylesworth that gets bait locally. Uh, so we buy locally sourced threadfin herring, and then if at all, uh, if any issues arise, they get it from South America. We don't get anything from overseas. Uh, I would imagine that'd be pretty terrible quality-wise, but uh, not here. We don't use sardines, and we don't use Chinese bait. Uh, let's see, but if we run out of bait, we can't get bait. We're going to get bait from somewhere. I <laughs> can guarantee you that, but uh, not in my lifetime have we bought bait from overseas like that. Let's see here. I have the following tackle for amberjack fishing, an accurate BV2-800 with 100-pound braid, 100-pound mono, and 100-pound fluoro with a Shimano 6'6 heavy rod. Any other suggestions? Um, I know a lot about fish and tackle guys, but I don't know every intricate detail of every reel. So whenever anybody sends me uh, questions like that, I have to Google it. So help me out by sending me is that a spinning rod? Is that a conventional rod? How much uh, drag capacity does it out have? Saves me a little legwork on my side. But uh, basically for Amberjack, if you've got a 100-pound line, that works well. I use 100-pound mono. Uh, my reel, I use a big 9-aught with 100-pound mono. I hate using braid for jacks. They, they shake their head too much. They fight too hard. It'll beat your butt if you use braided line for uh, jack so I always use mono for amber jack fishing I use a 125 pound leader a big 12 or a 10 to 16 ounce lead and a big 10 to 12 watt hook and a big big live bait that's what I use for amber jack about 40 to 50 pounds of drag is definitely uh, the minimum for Amberjack. You can go a lot heavier. A lot of those accurate reels have a lot more drag. So uh, definitely uh, want to go heavy, heavy for those big Amberjacks. It helps a lot. And avoid spinning reels. Spinning reels are not uh, a good idea. And in my opinion, they're not acceptable for using Amberjack or for fishing for amberjack on a party boat setting or multi-passenger charter boat setting that is the worst idea possible to try to hook up to a big amberjack with a spinning reel uh, now if you're vertical jig fishing you have to use braid and if you're vertical jig fishing still use a conventional reel you can sometimes if you have to use a spinning reel you can but it needs to be in an area where no one else is um, Primarily, though, just use conventional reels. They're going to be a lot better uh, when you hook up to that big, powerful fish. You have a lot more, uh, you have a lot more um, leverage is the word I was looking for. And we have a lot of videos when you go to our website. Uh, go to hubbardsmarina.com. Under the Fish and Trips tab, there's that Fish and Tips and Tricks page. On that Fish and Tips and Tricks page, there's actually a whole video here. Uh, that talks about uh, our double snail rig. It talks about how to vent fish. It talks about uh, braided lines versus mono. It talks about spinning rot reels versus conventional reel and why conventional reels are better for grouper. And it should also say better for amberjack too. So there's a lot of helpful videos there, including how to rig that double snail rig, how to brine your bait, and how to prep one of those uh, thread fin plugs is in that how to rig for a uh, double snails so check out that page it's definitely uh, pretty helpful in my opinion it's got a lot of good information in my opinion but I'm kind of biased because <laughs> I made it <laughs> uh, what size pipe insulation fits the rail of Florida fishermen oh that's an interesting question. So what size pipe insulation fits the rail of the Florida Fisherman 2? I, I see a lot of folks using it for padding. Uh, that's, that's interesting. So I have no idea about the size pipe insulation. I, I didn't even realize uh, there was sizes to that. <laughs> uh, we typically, most people just bring a pool noodle. So uh, a pool noodle works fine. You can cut it, duct tape it around the rail. And what they're asking about is creating a little pad on top of the metal rail. Some people on our long range trips and our 10 hour trips and our 12 hour trips, especially our 39 and 44 hour trips, 
Some people like bringing a little pool noodle or I guess pipe insulation. I didn't didn't realize that, but it, they bring that stuff and they wrap that foam around the uh, metal rail and then they use duct tape to secure it in place so you have a little bit of padding on the rail. Me personally, I don't really do that myself because you can just put the foam of the rod on the rail. You don't need to put that uh, foam on the rail. And uh, in my opinion, it's just an extra step that uh, an extra stuff you have to bring that you don't really need. But some people find it useful and some people find it uh, a, a must do. In my mind, you don't really need it because you're going to be holding your rod. And if you really need to put the rod on the rail, put the foam of the rod on the rail. You don't need padding for your rod. So, But some people like it. Some people hang their hooks in it. I don't like hanging my hooks in it because I always end up getting them tangled in something or getting them all tangled up so I can't grab them easily. Uh, it never works out for me. <laughs> so the foam isn't one of my uh, things that I do a lot, but it is popular. Let me tell you. Uh, would like to see the price of a half day, full day with rod rentals and meals if available. Uh, so all our prices are nice and listed on our website. When you go to our website under fishing trips, you can click the fishing trip information page. And the fishing trip information page at the bottom is going to have all the different trips and their pricing listed out real nice and neat. So you can see all the different trips and how much they cost. And the uh, meal package pricing, the rod rental pricing, the live bait pricing, all that information is right on each page so you can click the name of the uh, trip you're interested in and all those prices will be on the website page as well so it makes it really really easy for you to navigate there on the website or you can always go through the booking process if you want you can always start uh, making a mock reservation uh, pick a random day pick a trip pick what rod uh, what extras you want like rod rentals or meals and it'll tell you how much it costs before you have to enter your credit card and there's your price quote makes it real real easy that way so there's a couple options to get that information let's see here what other questions do we have here uh, any room on the early boat tomorrow for the five hour half day? I think we are pretty close to sold out for tomorrow. Let me double check. Nope, we got five spots available tomorrow morning. Um, so the five hour does have some room tomorrow morning, but it did fill up quickly. Um, because we can only carry a handful of people. Remember, we're severely limiting the number of guests that can join us. The half-day boat is licensed for 120 passengers. There's 78 rod holders. We normally allow only 65 people to keep the quality of the trip high. Right now, with everything that's going on, we only use or we're only allowing up to 30 people. So, uh, it's super light loads right now. So. Uh, and that's mandatory by us. That's our rule because we want to try to make sure that social distancing is possible. And right now we used a measuring tape. We can keep 33 people six feet apart on the big fishing boat. So definitely plenty of room to spread out. Uh, and there's no one spot on the boat better than any other. So absolutely no reason anybody should be upset spreading out up and down the deck because any spot on the boat's a good spot. Uh, and then as far as the galleys, the cabins, all that information on what we're doing policy-wise is, again, on that COVID-19 operating policies and procedures page of our website. All you have to do is go to hubbardsmarina.com, click info, and click that COVID-19 operating policies and procedures page. It talks all about under the boats what we're doing for the cabins. So the galley areas are open for food and drink sales. Um, and each vessel will have specific ordering uh, policies and each boat you cannot go inside to uh, consume the food. You'll have to order the food from the galley. The galley cook will uh, give you the food or drink and you'll have to consume it out on deck. The tables and benches inside the cabin areas 
will not be open for congregating or consuming food. And on our day trips, our five hours and 10 hour trips, the inside cabins will be completely locked and sealed off for your protection. Basically any open air uh, deck area or open air upper cabin area, you're allowed to hang out and congregate with just your group. Other groups must stay six feet apart and no enclosed spaces will be allowed uh, for guests to enter because we want to keep everybody as safe as possible. So outside in the open air, a lot safer than inside a cabin. Now on our 39 and 44 hour trips, obviously people are going to have to go in the cabin on those trips. We're going to keep people spread out as best we can in the bunks. We have an upstairs cabin. Hopefully a lot of people will want to sleep in the out, uh, upstairs open air area. We'll be able to spread you out even more. Uh, and then on those 39 and 44 hour trips, the cabin areas, you will not be able to hang out inside the cabin. You will not be able to go sit down inside the cabin. You can go inside the cabin and lay in your bunk. Or you can go inside the cabin and grab something and come right back out. There's no hanging out inside the cabin for the safety of our passengers, for the safety of our crew, for our galley cook, for everybody else on board. So we're going to work really hard to uphold all these policies and procedures, but we need you guys to read this information and be familiar with it so you know the rules too. So that way if you see something, you can say something, our crew can enforce it. Let's give away another trip. It is time to give away a 10 hour all day for two guests. Let's see here. Uh, 10 hour all day for two guests. Let's see who's the lucky winner. All right. Lucky winner of the 10 hour all day for two guests is, let's see, Stephen Miller. Lucky winner of the 10 hour all day for two guests from Pembroke, Georgia. Thanks for watching, Stephen. Uh, remember, guys, if you're picked as that lucky winner, you do have to, again, send us a message to that phone number right there, guys, with your full home address. Only if you're picked as the lucky winner uh, do you have to send us your home address. But make sure you claim it right away because we want to make sure you're watching live, and that's how it proves it. So the next question... Are there accommodations on the longer trip for women, uh, like the 39-hour trip? Uh, yes, we do have a women's restroom on the 39-hour trip. Now, there's not a special cabin for women, uh, so you're it's sleeping in a cabin area with other people. Uh, or we have the upstairs open-air cabin with other people, but there is a women's restroom. And we do our best to try to uh, give women those accommodations on 39-hour trips. Uh, every 39-hour trip, there is a, a lady on board. Tammy, our galley cook, is a woman, and we do often have ladies come with us on our 39 hour fishing trips we even have a group of ladies that come out fishing with us quite a bit on our 39 hour trips together as a group uh, so if you're interested in getting on a 39 hour troop trip as a lady there's ways that you can get on there with other ladies too and it's a good time i mean it's uh it's fun for anybody especially uh especially anybody with a little bit more experience. Those are advanced angler trips. So if you're a lady, you've been on a 10 hour trip a few times, you've been on a 12 hour, you want to try a 39 hour, don't be intimidated. Plenty of women come out on those trips. So shoot us a message. I can get you in contact with that, that ladies group who goes out fishing. Um, but definitely plenty of women on the 39 hour trips. Let's see here. Do you offer do you offer free birthday trips or birthday discounts? Uh, my boyfriend's trip is later this May. Yes, we do offer offer offer. I can't say words tonight. Yes, we do offer birthday trips. If you go again to our website hubbardsmarina.com under the info tab, you can scroll down to that free birthday trip, the free birthday trip page is going to have all the information on how uh, how to claim that free birthday trip. It's got to be their actual birthday. They got to bring their ID proven it's their actual birthday. They got to have someone with them who's going out and paying normal regular price for the trip. Um, it's pretty much the same rules that would apply at restaurants, uh, but it's got to be their actual birthday. So be aware of those policies and procedures, but yes, we do have free birthday trips. 
Uh, it's free for a five or 10 hour trip. For those longer range specialty trips like 12, 39, 44 hour trips, it's just discounted for those trips. Um, but there is ways uh, to get those free trips on our five and 10 hours. And it even works for those people who want to do dolphin tours or island trips or shelling trips or snorkeling. We do a lot more than just fishing. Uh, a lot of people forget that. And I do too. <laughs> Let's see here. When is fishing for shark? Is it better around the full moon? And does the same rules apply as it does for other species? Uh, fishing from shore. Uh, shark fishing, in my opinion, is tougher on a full moon. Uh, I did a lot of shark trips. I ran a lot of shark trips. And I, I think full moons get currents moving, fish moving, bait moving. And there's just so much activity. I think it's harder to catch those sharks. I think on new moons and around those quarter moon phases, basically any time except for a full moon, I think is a better shark fishing time because they're going to be more concentrated to come up to your chum line or to come up to that area you're fishing and feed because there's not as much bait action going in the water. When those currents are moving and that bait's around, there's too much easy prey in the water for them to come up and mess with your chum line or eat your bait, in my opinion. I think full moon shark fishing is more difficult uh, but they're probably more active on the full moon and there's probably more of them out and about feeding but there's other bait out there so it's harder uh it'd be like if if there's a hundred tacos on the table which one am i going to grab i don't know i might grab all of, or 10 of them <laughs> but if there's only two tacos on the table I, I can guarantee i'm gonna eat both of them you know it's the same thing with the shark if, if it's a full moon and there's hundreds of bait in the water he might grab a couple of those baits but there's no chance that he's gonna grab your bait whereas if it's another time there's not as much bait in the water he's more likely to grab your bait so think of it like that i think i want some more tacos <laughs> Uh, no one's even with me and I'm talking about food. Uh, it's so embarrassing. Uh, do you ever catch any mangrove snapper on the 10 hour trip? Uh, yes, we catch mangrove snapper on the 10 hour trip. There's been 10 hour trips, uh, that I went out fishing for fun and cat caught my day's limit, 10 mangrove snapper, um, on uh, a 10 hour so we definitely catch them on 10 hours not a lot of people fish for them a lot of times right now we have most people fishing for hogfish with live shrimp and it's real difficult to get those mangrove snapper as consistently targeting uh, hogfish like that um, using that double snell rig and that thread fin chunk and that fish finder rig with a uh, heavier weight getting down there fast being efficient uh, high speed reel that's going to help you catch more mangrove snapper and uh, if you fish hard for mangroves on a 10 hour you're going to catch mangroves especially uh, on those deeper water uh, 10 hour trips and most likely once we get up and running we're probably going to be a little deeper to start I know Captain Bobby ten generally fishes a little deeper. Frank fishes deep quite a bit too, but he really likes that hog fishing. And when you're targeting hog fish, you're not going to see as many mangroves, but they're definitely mixed in with the hog fish too. So it just kind of depends on what's going on, who's running the boat, and what we're targeting. But yeah, we catch uh, a lot of mangrove snappers on 10 hours when we have people targeting them. But if you want to specifically catch mangrove snapper, a 12-hour night mangrove snapper trip, or a 39-hour or 44-hour, even a 12-hour extreme is a good idea. But to really target mangroves, the 12-hour extreme, the 39-hour or 44 hours would be best. Uh, let's see here. Since no one has been fishing the reefs and potholes, will there be more fish stacked on them? That's a good question. I mean, it hasn't been that long. If it had been six months, yeah, definitely, without a doubt, more fish stacked up. There's, it's only been 40 days, so things aren't going to be night and day different from when we closed. Uh, hopefully there'll be a few more fish stacked on them, but there's been a ton of people out fishing. Like I said yesterday, I've never seen so many boats out on the water. And this morning, there was just boat after boat after boat. There was 20 boats at any one time shooting out the pass to go offshore. So tons of people have been out in the boat fishing uh, from their private boats. Hopefully 
all our fishing spots, all those little gems, those little small ledges that we have. Hopefully none of those were being fished, um, but those areas were for sure being fished and people were out there dropping lines. So I don't think the fish had as much of a break as we think, or as some people think. I think they were still getting pretty hard hit uh, by other people. Now, hogfish and some of those smaller ledges and some of those deep water special areas that we have, yeah, they, they got a nice break. We weren't hitting them. No one else was, hopefully. So we should uh, hopefully uh, get back and hit the ground running, especially because we've got great weather to start this week. We've got that full moon later this week. So the start of this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're uh, expecting some really good fishing, especially ahead of that little tiny baby front we have coming Thursday, uh, should hopefully make the fishing really good at the start of this week. Uh, I am planning a trip the week of May 18th. What are your trips looking like? Will there be room? Right now, for the month of May, we're pretty, pretty wide open. We're severely limiting the number of people that can come with us, so trips are going to fill quickly. Um, but right now, as once you look two or three days in advance, there's pretty much no one on our trips, no advance reservations. So I think a lot of people are kind of waiting to see how this whole thing shakes out and how things go. Uh, I'm kind of uh wondering that too how it's all gonna go are people gonna be willing to work with us are we gonna get people to spread out and obey uh that social distancing guidelines that is mandatorily required of us and hopefully everybody will work together things will work out well people won't go crazy out on the beaches and cause issues and cause the governor to close things back down um, but I think if everything keeps going slowly towards trending back reopening and everything goes smoothly, I think things will speed up quickly and hopefully we'll run into the problem where we don't have any room because our limited capacity trips will be getting filled up. But right now for the middle of May, we're pretty wide open. So book a trip early, book it often uh, <laughs> to prevent being sold out because again, we are super limited capacity for the month of May. Uh, and then when it comes to June, make sure you're booking now because those June trips, those red snapper trips in June and July already filling up. So make sure you book those trips now for sure. Uh, we are running out of time though. I talked about our D hookers. Don't forget, make sure you guys come and pick out one of these D hookers. Again, we open up tomorrow. We've got all the D hookers in the shop. We've got the eight and a half inch and the 13 and a half inch ones. So we got the shorties, the long ones. Uh, they're going to be in the shop when we open up tomorrow. So you can come by and see us. Remember, if you come by and see us, don't forget to read those policies and procedures. Go onto our website, click info, click COVID-19 operating policies and procedures. Because even if you're stopping by the office, you need to be aware of those policies and procedures so you know what to expect when you show up to the office for sure. Well, let's see what other... Uh, we're out of time for questions. So if I, uh, if I didn't get to your question, I'll do my best to go back through and answer any questions I didn't get to, um, uh, after the show ends. Uh, let's see. I think that is about it. So it is time to give away our last free trip. We definitely had more than 400 live viewers. I think at one point we had close to four. No. Yeah. Math. Not my strong suit. I think we had close to 500 live viewers at one point uh, between Facebook and YouTube, but uh, definitely got enough to give away a free 39 hour fishing trip. Um, don't forget, though, guys, come out and see us this week. Tune into the show next week. You'll hear how our first week of fishing went, and uh, you'll get to uh, hear some more stories and uh, answer some more questions. And uh, we'll have some more guests back on the show. We had a lot of guests two weeks ago with that Zoom uh, chaos with all the crew members and captains. It got a little out of hand. We tightened it up last week. We only had uh, three guests last week. It was a little bit more tame, a little bit more uh, professional. And this week I decided just to run it solo because I felt like I wanted to answer more questions and get some more information 
information out there uh, without uh, dealing with the Zoom thing. But next week, we're going to bring some more guests back. Hopefully, you enjoyed this week alone with me. Hopefully, you'll tune in next week again for another live stream show. And uh, tune in to our videos this week to stay up to date with how things are going and what's going on here at Hubbard's Marina. Now that we're open, we're open. Just... A few more short hours till I get to drive to work and unlock those doors. I'm so excited. <laughs> Let's see who won a 39-hour fishing trip for one person. 39-hour trip for one guest goes to Howard Johnson. Hojo is on board. That's pretty funny. Howard Johnson, <laughs> shoot us a text message uh, with your home address to claim your free 39-hour trip. The rest of you guys, we'll see you again next week for another live show. Remember, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too darn busy. Thanks for tuning in tonight, guys. Have a great night.